Hey everybody, Joe Lowry, what a day. Happy Friday out there to everybody. Happy St. Patrick's Day to you. All those who want to be Irish, who wish to be Irish, well, I guess everybody is Irish on this Friday. And we finally made it through the work week. I gotta tell you, bring on the weekend. I don't know about you, but the changing of the clocks last week in spring forward and the storm that wasn't, that turned out to be nothing. And uh, this sure did seem like a long week, I gotta tell you though. But you know, I'm officially done with winter, I think. Uh, spring officially arrives on Monday and Mother Nature is not allowing it. Um, as a native New Englander, I love the four seasons, the changing of the seasons, the beginning of another and so forth, but the winter season is trying to extend its stay, and I'm not liking that one bit at all. And the other thing I'm worried about, that's right, the home opener for the Red Sox, April 3rd, Fenway Park. I'm not even sure Fenway will be thawed out in time. And speaking of the Red Sox, well, they're currently on the radar to go pretty far this year. That's right, even though there's no longer Big Poppy, look for Dustin Pedroy to lead this team. Watch out for the new improved pen. And that's right, Pablo Sandoval, his bat's coming back. He's lost some weight, he's in shape, and if he comes in with the bat, we all know he has. Look, we on the lookout. And you know, the pitching staff was bolted this winter with the addition of strikeout extraordinaire Chris Sale, who comes as advertised and combined him with Cy Young winner Rick Porcello and add that to David Price, Joe Kelly, and the rest of them. I got to say, uh, we might be playing some uh, October baseball, as they say. Well, March Madness in full swing. Day one of the NCAA tournament was uh, just proved costly for a lot of teams. Market, bucket, bucket. What do they call it? Bra bracket busters. That's a tough one to say. Number nine, Vanderbilt. They were upset by number eight, Northwestern. And, of course, another upset, number 11, Xavier, beat number six, Maryland. But the biggest one of all came last night, number 12, Middle Tennessee, beating number five, Minnesota. Now, that's a bracket buster. Let the madness roll on. It continues now on TV. And for all you basketball fans, the Celtics, well, it looked like the injury to Isaiah Thomas seems minimal. He's going to take the next couple of games off to rest the knee and so forth. And if you haven't noticed, they're first place in the Atlantic Division. And they're actually the number two team overall in the conference. So, you know, watch out for them Celtics. You might be playing some ball here late May and June. And the Bruins have a very rare weekend off. They don't play again until Monday when they travel to Edmonton to kick off a busy week-long schedule. Patriots news. Well, they have fired away Super Bowl 52 um, favorites. That's right. They are right now sitting at 4-1 to odds in Las Vegas. The best odds ever. That actually was even improved since the um, addition of the new free agents and before free agency. Right behind them, though, are the Cowboys, Steelers, and Packers at 10-1 to odds. Uh, earlier today, it was learned that WWE superstar John Cena, well, he'll be inducting former world champion and gold medalist Kurt Angle into the WWE Hall of Fame. And as mentioned earlier this week, I'll be doing a very special WrestleMania What A Day weekend come WrestleMania weekend. You know, speaking of WrestleMania, it always brings me back. You know, back in 1985 when I was a youngster and I fell in love with this great sport. Quick story here, I'll tell you. It was a Sunday afternoon. I told my parents I was going to go play street hockey. What actually ended up happening was I ditched my stick. I went in town, bought a $20 ticket at the Garden and went in there. And uh, I watched WrestleMania unfold and so forth. And as, as I was coming out, Mike Dowling from Channel 5 was interviewing everybody. They actually interviewed me, and I got on TV and so forth, but I made it home in time for Sunday dinner. My parents thinking I went to play street hockey, but as each family member approached the dinner table, and they said, hey, we saw you on TV on the 6 o'clock news. Well, my parents looked at me and never looked at me the same way again, I got to tell you. But that's the kind of passion I had as a kid for this great sport. You got to love it, you know. Well, we all know he would end up somewhere. Former Buffalo Bills Jets head coach Rex Ryan. Well, he's reportedly signed a deal to become an ESPN NFL analyst for the upcoming season, period. Thank you. And for all you Monopoly fans out there, there's some changes taking place to this uh, this game. They have booted the boot, wheeled out the wheelbarrow, and the thimble has been thumped. I, I did not write that. And their place will be the Tyrannosaurus Rex, a penguin and rubber ducky. More than 4.3 million voters from 146 countries weighed in on this. Tokens, they wanted to see future versions of this property acquisition game. And I didn't know this. I did not know that Monopoly is based on the real-life streets of Atlantic City. How about that? And Hasbro, they're from Pawtucket, Rhode Island. Pretty cool. Well, here's a quick one I just saw in Boston today. Uh, Massachusetts residents don't need to be reminded of how Irish their state is. i got to tell you, with everything you need to know with the St. Paddy's Day weekend, thousands of Massachusetts residents will be flocking to many Irish bars in the Boston area. The St. Paddy's Day Parade South, even though it's short this weekend, is coming up. And, of course, the St. Patrick's Day breakfast is that it take place. Just in case you didn't know, U.S. Census Bureau, attained by the Boston Globe, confirms what we already know. 
Massachusetts is officially the most Irish state in America. That's right. According to Globe, 21.6 Mass residents claim some sort of Irish ancestry. That's the highest in the nation. And the rest of New England isn't too far as well. New Hampshire at 21%, Rhode Island at 18%, and Vermont at 19%, not actually 17%. Maine finished at a little under 17, and riding up the top five was Connecticut with 15%. Uh, and for some reason, Pennsylvania and Delaware snuck in there as well. And, um, you know, they're all claiming the best. The rest of the top ranking towns are all a short try from Marshfield and Hanover. Situate, Noel, and Whitman all combined for almost 44% of Irish ancestry. I got to tell you, you know, if you're out there tonight celebrating St. Patty's Day, just do me one favor. If you're going to drink, don't drive. And if you're going to drive, don't drink. I'm Joe Lowry. Happy St. Patty's Day. What a day.